Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here, and I hope you are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I hope you are soon. So uh, today we're going to kick off a little series on Morkborg playing that solo with the Solitary Defilement solo rules. Uh, this is going to be a four-part video series. In this first episode, we're going to be creating a character, and then I'm going to be talking a little bit about the adventure that we're going to be going on. And the second part of the adventure, each uh, subsequent part, is going to be showcasing a different uh, set of rules from Solitary Defilement. So the, uh, the second video will be an overland crawl where we are going to be traveling on this map. We're going to be using the Dungeon Degenerates map board as, as, our, as our overland to travel on. And then we're going to do a city crawl. We're going to uh, explore the city of Pigskin Port up here. And then we're going to travel to a dungeon to do a dungeon crawl for the final part of our adventure. Now, I'm probably not going to show the entirety of each part of the adventure on camera. Uh, you will see some of it. You might see some highlights and that kind of thing. But I just kind of want to show how this game, how well this game works solo using just the Morkborg sol uh, core rules, solitary defilement, and of course the Ferratory. And all of these can be had on uh, DriveThruRPG for a really good price. And the, the Morkborg uh, book is only like 25 bucks or something on Amazon. So, so all of this can be recreated. I guess you would have to have this Dungeon Degenerates game if you have this. It's, it, it's a perfect uh, game board to use for, for Morkborg. Of course, it's not in scale, but that doesn't really matter. So I do have an idea, an adventure idea in my mind, and we're going to be using uh, this character here from Dungeon Degenerates, this standee, as my avatar. And um, I was kind of inspired by one of the small little side quests in um, in Elden Ring in order to, to generate this adventure. And in Elden Ring, towards the beginning of the game, the very first kind of legacy dungeon you can go to is called Stormvale Castle. And there's this really cool side quest that has to do with Stormvale Castle where... You find out that there are these pilgrims who who go there to be grafted, which basically means they have their limbs removed to be attached to other beings. It's it's really dark. It's really cool, and it's really twisted. And so, the idea that I want to have for this adventure is I'm going to create a character who was assaulted in this swamp region uh, near the black tree this my character was assaulted by this beast by this like manly beast i need to come up with a name for this thing and he was left for dead however in in, in the in a last attempt at some kind of uh retribution i swung out my weapon my and and, and i cleaved off this thing's arm and the thing the attacker escaped and I was left almost dead holding this thing's arm. And in my twisted state of mind, what I decided to do was to uh, go on a trek to Pigskin Port, this town where I have heard that there is a great barber surgeon in Pigskin Port. And I want to have that thing's arm attached to me. I want to have his arm grafted onto a part of my body. And then I want to use the thing's arm to kill the thing once I track it down in this like twisted kind of retribution. I want to kill the thing using its own arm as a weapon. And so uh, I'm just, I'm overcome with uh, just with a sense of revenge of I, I'm driven insane by this, this, this great sense of revenge and retribution on this thing that attacked me and left me for dead. So that is going to be my, my adventure. And so now let's go ahead and uh, create a a, um, a character. I'm using this really close up camera for this adventure just because I think it's really important for everybody to be able to see the text, to be able to see the pictures and the layout and the colors. 
and everything uh, really, really up close and kind of in your face because that's the kind of game this is. And it's it's really is why I like playing this game, especially uh, as I've been playing it uh, with my group. We've been playing it as a co-op game to where everybody is just is, is really involved in every aspect of the game, of the book, of holding the materials, of using the things. And I just I, I really like that a lot. We are going to go over how we're going to use the calendar because as for those of you who don't know, a campaign and adventure of Morkborg is played in a world that is absolutely going to end. It's not a question of if the world is going to end. It is a question of when the world is going to end. And while you are playing, you have you every day you roll for a certain event to transpire. These events are called miseries. And once seven miseries have occurred, the world ends and everything is dead and you have to like start over. You start a new campaign, you start new characters. And the way you determine that is at the, every day you roll a, a dice, you roll a die. And if it's a one, then uh, you roll on this chart here to have your misery. And every time you hit a misery, you can change the die. So we are going to start, we're going to say the world is ending pretty soon. You can start with like a D100 to where your chance of ever rolling a one is pretty low, or you can have a D2 where you have a 50-50 chance of start of, of hitting that one. We're going to start on a D6. We're going to use a D6 twice. Then we'll go down to a D4 twice. And then our final days will be a D2. So depending on how long it goes for, you know, the world is going to tick away. Time is ticking quite quickly in this adventure. So hopefully we'll see some of that on camera. But let's go ahead and make a, a character here. And uh, this says here that in this world, there are those who seek riches or redemption. That is us. We are saying, or we're seeking revenge, retribution, vengeance. Uh, some say the apocalypse is escapable. Well, it's not. That it might even be stopped. We know that's not true. And there you walk in discord and despair. One hand holds 2d6 times silver. Okay, so let's see how much silver we start with. Uh, five. Okay, so what was that? 2d6 times 10. So we're going to start with 50 silver. So I'll go ahead and write 50 silver here on my character sheet. Okay. The other hand holds a water skin and d4 days worth of food. Okay, so we have a water skin. Water skins have four days worth of water. Water skin. Okay, so we have uh, four days worth of water and we have D4 days of food. We have two days of food. So we're probably going to have to do some hunting uh, when we get started here. Your, um, the other hand holds a water skin and D4 days worth of food. Your soul and your silver are your own and equally easy to lose. To begin with, you are what you own. Okay, so let's see what we own here. We're going to roll a D6. Two. Okay, so we have a backpack for seven normal-sized items. So we can hold seven normal-sized items in our backpack. So I'm just going to go ahead and number these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so all of these items will be in our backpack. Okay, we also own two uh, presents plus four torches. Okay, so we haven't rolled our presents yet, but we're going to have a certain number of torches. So we're going to write down torches here. Okay, and then we also have nine. Um, a shield, minus one HP damage, or have the shield break to ignore one attack. Okay, so in a weapon we're going to have in our in our offhand here, we're going to have a shield. And that shield is going to be minus one HP damage, or we can break to negate one attack. Okay, so those are the items that we start with. Um, 
We don't have any scrolls. We didn't start off with too, too many cool things, but let's see, create a, a character PC. So we're gonna randomize our starting equipment. That's what we did. Now we're gonna randomize, randomize weapons and armor. So let's see what weapon we start with. We're going to roll a D10. And a 10, all right, so D10 here. So we had, here we have a femur, which we could have had on a one. We could have rolled a staff, a short sword, a knife, a war hammer, a sword, a bow with a number of arrows, um, all kinds of different weapons here. And then here we get the uh, bigger weapons here. And we have a Zweihander. Okay, so the Zweihander is actually a two-handed weapon. So we won't be able to wield both the shield and the Zweihander. But um, let's go ahead. So I will write the Zweihander. One of my favorite weapons from the first Dark Souls. I didn't really like it in any of the um, subsequent games, but that does D10 damage. Okay, that's pretty sweet. So you could also have started with a flail or a crossbow. Okay, and then now we need to uh, roll our abilities. And so the abilities here are um, abilities. So there are four different abilities, uh, five really when you are playing um, Solitary Defilement. So we'll go over that. So you have agility, which is your defense, balance, swim, fleeing. Presence is your perceive, aim, charm, will, powers. Strength is crush, lift, strike, and grapple. And toughness is you can resist poison, cold, heat, survive, uh, falling. So you have four abilities, and within those abilities, you have your groups of skills. So you don't have skills in this game. You just use your abilities for everything. And so to uh, create a character here, we're going to roll 3d6 using the table on the right to generate each ability score. The sum is not used. It's just the ability, the, the bonus that's used. Player characters not created with the optional classes can roll 4d6 and drop the lowest die for two of their abilities. When the character is later improved on, abilities can never exceed plus six or minus three. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll our strength. Since I am armed with a Zweihander, I want to use that um, special 4d6 for this one so I can drop the lowest here to give me my total for strength. Ooh, great roll. All right, so there is 12, 17. Um, 17, that is going to give me a plus three on my strength. I'm going to be really good at combat, hopefully. Um, my agility, okay, I'm just going to do the 3d6 for my agility. Maybe I'm just going to be kind of a slow, lumbering, strong dude, but let's see here. All right, yes, uh, <laughs> there's a four, seven. So that gives me a negative one on my agility. Uh, presence, I will go ahead and just do the three here. Um, 11, so that's going to give me a plus zero. And then toughness, I'll go ahead and do the 4d6, so that way I can uh, drop the lowest. And ooh, okay, well, there's a bunch of twos, so there is six, seven, eight, so that is going to give me a zero toughness. And omens are a stat that is used mostly in solitary defilement as a stat, as like a luck stat. And I'm going to start with a D4. Normally you start with a D2, but in this solo game, I'm going to start with D4 omens. And every time I take a long rest, I can regenerate up to D4 omens. So let's see. I start with, oh, well, one omen. Okay, very good. All right, so omens can be used and they are currency that can be spent and they're also kind of a luck stat, like I said. They can be used to roll maximum damage, to re-roll any die to prevent uh, D6 damage, to lower a difficulty rating by four, or to um, cancel a crit or cancel a fumble. So those are different ways that you can use omens. And the different ways that tests are used, you just take your, your bonus, so plus three, minus one, zero, and zero. And if I needed to do a test, I would just roll D20 and add or subtract my bonuses. In Solitary Defilement, all tests except for combat 
are done on a 2d20 system and the normal difficulty rating for something uh, for a normal challenge is 12 and so if i was to make an attack i would use my strength so i would add three to both of these so 15 and 18 the normal difficulty rating is 12 both of those would have hit so that would be a strong success so whatever i was trying to do would be a resounding success if one is a miss and one is a hit, then that is a partial success or it's it's a success, but a twist, something happens, a chance to tell a story. And then if they both miss, then that is just considered a miss. Uh, 20s are considered to be criticals and ones are considered to be fumbles. Okay, so now we need to uh, generate our hit points and hit points is our toughness plus D8, never worse than one. Okay, so I have a toughness of zero, so I'm just gonna have a straight roll and a D8 for my hit points. What do I have? Five, okay, not bad. So my max hit points is going to be five and my current hit points is also five there. And that is pretty much it for character creation. Character creation is super fast. Um, one thing I did want to add to this character creation is one of these unheroic feats. So this is a, a, a third party supplement, optional advancement rules for more work, but I like to start off a character with one of these abilities. And so I'm going to roll D66 here to see uh, what kind of unheroic feat I start with. Uh, the green is gonna be tens. Okay, 13. So I am, let's see here, I am a beastly scholar. You study the beasts of the land, gutting them and spilling viscera to uncover secrets of the world. You may scry and see the future with an animal's innards, gain an omen for every 10 HP the beast had, but never more than your maximum omens, which is four, a usable once per animal kind. The beast's innards may also provide enlightening information. Oh, that's really cool. So I am going to want to hunt. Maybe uh, I can do some hunting in the area where I am in order to maybe find some clues about where my assailant escaped to. So I'm going to go ahead and write that kind of as my class. I am a beastly scholar. And these kind of solo games, that is kind of why I do like rolling on this unheroic feats table, because it does give me just a little bit of a hint into what kind of character I have, what kind of character I am. And it can help with some of the storytelling. It can help uh, just fleshing out the world or fleshing out my character and my place in the world. So I do have 50 silver. I should probably buy some armor, at least some light armor. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the um, shopping. What was I wearing? What, what did I have on me when, uh, when I was attacked? Let's see, here we go. Okay, so armor. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just have some light armor. I'm gonna have, uh, we'll just say some nice leather armor. So we're gonna write leather armor here. Leather armor is um, a tier one armor, which I can prevent D2, um, uh, minus D4 damage. Oh no, I'm sorry, minus D2 damage. So I can prevent up to two uh, hit points worth of damage by wearing that leather armor there. And how much did that cost? That cost 20 silver. So I have 30 silver left in my pocket. Uh, what else could I purchase to help me out here? Let's see, was I, let's say, um, let's say I had nothing else. Let's say that the, 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 I did have some rope. Rope is always handy. That's four silver. I also have 30 feet of rope left in my bag. Everything else was taken. I was left with, with my Zweihander, uh, cause since I cut off my assailant's arm, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't take the two hander uh, sword because, uh, he only has one hand. And he's very literal. My assailant is very literal. So he left me with this Viander. Uh, maybe I can find a three-hander. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the German word for three is, but maybe a three-hander sword. Maybe I'll, I'll have somebody in pigskin port craft me a three-handed sword in order to, uh, to kind of poetically kill my assailant with holding 
a three-handed sword with both of my hands and his hand, its hand as well. So finally, I need to think of a name and uh, I'm just going to roll a random name. So we're gonna do a D6 and a D8 with the D6 first. So my name is going to be v Vimet, Wimet. So we're gonna put Wimet Helig. All right, so that is my name. So I am a beastly scholar. I was attacked by this just grotesque beast of a man, of a person, of a being. He, it left me for dead at the base of the black tree. But in a last gasp attempt to kill my assailant, I struck out with my Zweihander. I cut off this thing's arm and I grabbed the arm. It fled away in pain, in shrieking pain. And I became totally consumed with retribution, totally consumed with getting revenge that now I want to trek all the way across the land. I want to trek through the witch woods, perhaps through the, the uh, Brutalberg fields into the rotten foothills here to pigskin port to f try to track down a a uh a barber surgeon who can help me graft my assailant's arm onto my body and then i want to find clues as to where my ass assailant fled to and murder it using something having to do with its own limb. And that is going to be the adventure. So the next part is going to be an overland crawl. Then we're going to do a city crawl. And then we're going to do a dungeon crawl. And that will be our little four part adventure with Morkborg and Solitary Defilement. So all right guys, well I hope you enjoyed this introductory video. We will talk to you later. Bye bye.